Well, it's another rainy day in Florida. Out to go fishing at Boca Grande Pier. We're gonna have a great time fishing. Please subscribe to our channel. It helps us out and we hope you get something out of it. We're always learning and hopefully you're learning. And if you have any suggestions of what you might like to see, please let us know. And here's the path with all the mosquitoes. You can see it down there. And everybody's getting set up and getting ready for fishing, especially after the rain. Hello. Hello. Oh. Where would you like it? Go right down here. Now I'm going to set up my poles, pull my gear out, and get ready to go. This time, at least I had the wagon. Last time, I had to run through that mosquito infested area with the cooler in my hand and a bucket in my hand, and that was a pain to get through, especially with all that stuff. I had to stop and change hands all the time because my arm would, get, my one arm would get tired. Yeah, we're out here at uh, the pier out here at Boca Grande. You can see a bunch of people fishing over this way in their boats, and we got a few people in the pier, and a lot of people just started, and uh, we're gonna, well, we're just starting too. And we're gonna see what we can do. Last time we caught a lot of snapper and some snook, and hopefully we're gonna catch a lot of snapper this time. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, the one thing we learned, uh, at least on the golf side, is you can see the shrimp are kind of small. I guess in the summer months, they act, the shrimp are actually smaller. When it becomes, or when winter comes, they actually get a little, little bit larger. So you're kind of dealing with the smaller shrimp, smaller live shrimp, but it still works. And I still use it uh, on a sabiki rig. I cut them up and I use it to get the croaker or small pinfish um, for larger fish. Wow, it's redfish. Woo! Woo! No, it's redfish. I think. Don't let it wrap, don't let it wrap, don't let it wrap. Wow, Breen, um... I gotta get the net. Yes. Hold on. Oh, nice one. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, be careful, be careful. We can't keep it. We can't keep redfish, can we? Oh, 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 back over, back over. Oh. Oh. He might be oversized. Huh? He might be oversized. That's why he might be. Wow. Oh. Nice. Well, I think he prefers something bigger. Yeah? I think so. It depends what size it is. I'm going to have to check. I don't know. Uh, I need to check my phone real quick. Okay. So I checked my phone and the gentleman is somewhat correct, but incorrect for this area. So you can't keep redfish in this area or down in Fort Myers, but in Marco Island you can and on the Atlantic you can. They just have to be a certain size and only you can catch so many. But over here you cannot keep, you have to let it go. This was a nice catch. She caught a nice a uh, nice, beautiful redfish, but you gotta let it go. Oh, it took me around the pile. But is it still on? Yeah, I think it's still on. It's just, I think he wrapped me around. Yeah, don't pull on it too hard. See my... Oh, is that your float? Yeah, it's the float. You see it? Yeah, I see it, but I think he's... Can I see this? Yeah. Let me see where your line's going. He took you around the pile piling. Yeah, that's what I said, yeah. Would you have one for bait? It's a little... Pit little fish? Yeah. A little fish? Probably snook, definitely, the way it took your rod like that. You think it can wrap it back around? I think you'd have to swim to do it. Depends how <laughs> dedicated you are to catching the fish. Where's it? You, you can wrap it. Oh yeah, you got to take it under that. Because he took it this way. Yeah. He took it in between these two pilings, which is tough. Um, let me see it. I mean, we could pass your rod probably under it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Just be careful. Here. Let's see if I can lay down on the other side. Hold on a second. Give 
Give me a fun just in case oh, <laughs> it will fall. Okay, got it. Got it? Yeah. All right, easy. Oh, wait, here. We're, give it back to me. We're going to have to go under this. Okay. Hold on. My bad. I can lay it's down. Gonna, it's going to be a little bit tougher, but... Hold on. Let me lay down. Okay. Okay. Got it? Okay. Yep. Pull that out. Hold on slowly. I'm going to... There is some line. Cut her up. Okay. Pull it got out. it. All right. Okay. Now, let's try and put it... This is where this line is. It's right down here somewhere. You see it? Yeah, I'm probably in the way. I can't tell now. Let's pull. Let's try and uh, stand up, back up on the dock, and and uh, see if we can get it. It's probably still caught around this piling. Can you grab us. that? Yeah. Uh, uh, All right. You see? Yeah. I don't think there's a fish on it anymore. Because I'm pulling it. Oh. It might cut it off eventually. Yeah, see it slipped the bobber off. Oh. Ah, that sucks. Yep, you can see where he probably just pulled it tight and broke, broke yeah. it right off. I probably have a big, big snook on there though. Cause your rod went like this, I watched it went. Yeah, I saw that too, <laughs> I was like, ah. Oh. Now if you look down, you can see all the pylons around there. If you're not careful, the fish will take it, it'll wrap it all the time. So you gotta question whether you want your drag loose or tight when you're uh, fishing around here. And I have to give credit to this gentleman. His uh, YouTube channel is called The Ocean Dude and he was very helpful. Here's a challenge for you. Someone let me know what this fish is. Uh oh, I got a bite. I got a bite. This is a weird looking fish, huh? Like a little snake fish or something. I'm gonna give Squid a little shot here. I'm gonna wrap it around so it's harder to take off, otherwise it just pull it off. Like that. Like so. There we go. It's all ready to go. Oh look, I caught a frogfish. I guess this plant on the back is uh, can hurt you, and I guess somehow it's poisonous. Oh no, I've never caught one, and I have to re do some research on it. Well, we'll have to see. Interesting looking, huh? But they're all under here under the pier. We caught one last time. My wife caught one a little bit bigger, um, but now I caught one too. Remember something? No, it's something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh. No, you got it. Ah. Hold on. Ah. Oh. Hold on. Do you have? Bring it up. Where is it going? Careful, man. Don't get in the pile. Don't get in the pile. Don't get in the front Don't. You'll get it out. Can you get it? No. Yeah. Stingray, do you have a net? Yeah, I do have a net. Wow. Hold on. Very small one. Uh -oh. Hold on. Bring it over. Nice. Cool. Oh, nice. <laughs> Something. Yeah. Woo. It's actually not that small. Yeah, it's good. Look at this stingray. Got a nice little smile on. Anyway, if you've never tried stingray, it's actually pretty good. I tried it one time. Um, we watched somebody else do it and we thought it was a little strange. But then we tried it and it's actually pretty good meat. Do you want to keep it? Yes. All right. Nice. Have you ever eaten one of these things? No. They're actually good. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Is that just a regular like cow nose ray or? Huh? What type of ray is it? Do you know? I think it's just a regular, yeah. Regular steak. But it's good to eat. I was surprised. We, we actually got one 
down where we catch it uh marco island and uh we decided well because we've seen other people play the wings so we tried it actually it doesn't taste like fish yeah nice kind of a tougher meat um i didn't think it was that tough we got the tail this barb right here this barb is actually really sharp and if you're not careful and especially if you go out and step on them it'll go right through your leg got a sea urchin pretty cool I don't know if they die real quick I think they die real quick so I want to throw it back in real quick um, I don't even know if we're supposed to keep them so I got to check that out too but it was pretty interesting I caught one we have some company with this pelican he's gonna come and hang out and look for little bait fish which we're catching Wait. Oh, Another little penny. I'm gonna use it for bait. Throw this guy out. Get another one. Pretty big pinfish. So if you're not careful, your sabiki rig can catch other things too. As you can see here, it's a catfish. A little small one, um, but I'm going to take it off and throw it back in. But sometimes, yeah, you'll get the catfish off the Sabika rig as well. Oh. oh, man. The fish took my whole pole into the water. My good reel, too. My reel that my wife bought. <laughs> it just pulled it into the water. I mean, it's it's gone. It's gone. Can we get it though? Oh, thank you so much. Nice. First cast, baby. Oh, thanks so a lot, man. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I told you. I f***ing told you, man. Oh, man. Just rinse it. Rinse your reel off with uh, yeah, fresh bro. water as much as you can. Look at that. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> Man. <laughs> wow, thank you. Thank Very you well. so much. Just wash your reel off because, you know, salt water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just rinse it off with fresh water. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome, guys. <laughs> Man. What a lifesaver. Thanks. <laughs> Thankfully, somebody knows how to throw a net and got my water. Oh, Man. That was an experience. Take that. And again, my pole didn't even bend a little bit. It just shot over the rail. And it was, it's like, you know, it's like when you sit there and you're like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> you're like in shock. You're like, whoa. I'm already. I'm like, oh, but he got it with his net. Thankfully, he got it with his net. Oh, what an experience. <laughs> well, we had a great night fishing. We caught a stingray. We caught, my wife caught a red drum, and we caught some snapper. And using the Sabiki rig, I caught some pins that I used for, or used as bait for larger fish. All right, so when you're fishing out there, there's a lot of pylons, and there's two competing philosophies when, well, when you're fishing. So one is to keep your drag loose. Now, I've been trying that, and that's great, but when you're fishing around pylons, then either snook or something will come up and grab your bait and drag it back down and even wrap it around the pylons and rays will do that too so in that case i get my line stuck all the time i have to cut it off and then i have to re-rig it um, and then do it again as you can see um, when i was trying to get my you know line and the gentleman was helping me uh, get my line from you know unwrapping it from around the pylon. The other side of it is to keep your drag tight in order for when a fish hits it, then you're able to grab it real quick and um, pull it so, and get it to where you don't get it wrapped around the pylon. Well, it's easier said than done. It's not that easy. As you can see, when I did that, my pull just kind of flew out into the air, into the water. So, 
I, you know, it's really up to you guys, how, however you guys want to do it. Um, it's, it's just a matter of preference, I guess, um, whether you want to leave it loose or keep it tight. That's up to you. But just remember that at some point you're going to be re-rigging because most likely you will get it stuck around a pylon or something will happen. So subscribe to our channel. It helps us out and we enjoy making videos for you guys and showing you our experiences um, and our issues that we have along the way. Um, but let us know what you think in regards to keeping your drag loose or keeping it tight, when, especially when you're fishing off a pier or around pylons. Let us know what you like to do and what you prefer.